we have our upcoming construction. I'm going to tell you about that this morning. In Oakland, your upcoming construction is at I-696 eastbound between I-75 and I-94. That's going to start tomorrow at 10 p.m. And all lanes are scheduled to be closed until 5 a.m. on Monday. So be aware of that. In Wayne County, upcoming construction at I-94 westbound between I-75 and I-96 is going to start tomorrow morning. Um, excuse me, tomorrow evening at 9 p.m. And all lanes are closed until 9 p.m. on Saturday. So it's only going to be one day for that. Also in Wayne, you're going to have upcoming construction at I-94 westbound between I-96 and Michigan Avenue, which is exit 210. That's going to start this evening at 10, p uh, 10 p.m. And it's going to be scheduled to run all the way until 5 a.m. on Monday. So if you have to go that way this weekend, please be aware of that. In Essex County, stop and go traffic right at Highway 3 westbound between Toll Plaza and the U.S.-Canada border. Also in Essex County, Highway 3 westbound between County Road 18 for East and County Road 29 Division Road North. That is slow today. In Detroit, I-375 northbound between Jefferson Avenue and Lardy Chrysler Drive is running slow. Allen Park, your slowdown is at M39 Southfield Freeway northbound between Outer Drive and Oakwood Boulevard. In Dearborn, Michigan Avenue eastbound between Evergreen and Southfield Freeway is running slow this morning. In Ypsilanti, your slowdown is at Michigan Avenue westbound between M17 E Course Road and I-94. Bloomfield Township, your slowdown is happening right at Woodward Avenue northbound between Hickory Grove and Square Lake Road. Now, on to the weather. Right now in Detroit, it's 71 degrees and mostly cloudy. Today, we can expect sunshine and clouds mixed with possible thunderstorms, a high of 84. Tonight, we're looking at clear skies, low around 60 degrees. On Friday, just plenty of sunshine with a high of 82 degrees. Friday night, we're looking at a low of 60 degrees with mostly clear skies. And Saturday, sunshine and clouds mixed with a high of 81 degrees. The weather's been brought to you by Weather Vision, and the traffic's been brought to you by the Total Traffic Network. Coming up, our own urban conservative, Kerry Leon Jackson, right here on 9 10 a.m., the Superstation, the voice of Detroit. Good morning, Metro Detroit. This is Kerry Leon Jackson, your urban conservative. How are you this morning? Time now is 6.03. If you've got to be there by 7 o'clock, you've got 57 minutes to get there. You're listening to 9, 10 a.m. Superstation, the voice of Detroit. The number here in the studio is 313-778-7600. 313-778-7600. Uh, in a couple of minutes, I'm expecting a phone call from a young lady, a principal out in the Wayne Westland area. She's going to call and tell us about uh, another one of those positive sort of events in the community but until she calls uh, we're going to keep going sort of with where we left off yesterday when I talked about yesterday how we've gotten to that point where uh, and, and if you watch the news at all over yesterday evening you see that you know apparently the country is all on edge whenever there's a, a motorcycle backfiring you can see a thousand people running for the safety and if there's at least the slightest threat that there might be an armed gunman coming to come get someone, then they will clear out the entire USA Today World Headquarters. Yes, the world is on edge. You never know where a crazed shooter is going to show up. And apparently, the government is not planning to, and Donald Trump is never going to fund uh, the, any plans at all to protect you. So you're going to have to protect yourself. And I know that, as I talked about yesterday, that apparently I'm not, my, my teenager is now at that age where I'm going to have to take him over to the gun range and teach him gun safety and how to fire and how to hold the weapon and make sure that he knows what safety is so that we don't have any unfortunate things. But I also want to get him to that point of learning to protect himself. But now we've got an extra added wrinkle where there are these things that uh, you will hear about on the news yesterday, today, and probably for the rest of the week. Uh, they are called red flag laws. 
and red flag laws. You've got a lot of really conservative people claiming, oh, no, this is the horrible thing. The government is coming to take your guns. I knew that Obama had planned on taking our guns. Well, Trump's president now. And, and now this is an issue where the government's going to send the police up on your porch, knock on your door and say, we want your gun. And whenever there's going to be a gun-related issue, the two people that come to mind, one is Terry Johnson, who is calling right now online, one, and the second is NRA instructor, firearms expert, well-known international firearms expert Rick Ector, who decided to get up early, early this morning and come join us in the studio because he feels that passionate about red flag laws. Now, for those of you that are unfamiliar with exactly what a red flag law is, apparently they've been adopted in 17 states and many other states are considering it, but the real reason that it's in the news now is that there are Republicans and, I see Terry tell him, just hold on, we can get to him in a minute, that there are Republicans and Democrats both in the, the House and the Senate that have said, you know what, As a reason, we've got to do something. Thoughts and prayers are not enough. And so we've got to actually move forward. And they, they now have a, a, I don't know, what do you want to call it, a, a, where both the Republicans and the Democrats agree on some bipartisan proposal that even the president has said he would probably support. And so if, in fact, that, that there would be a, that, that in an instance where a, a friend, a family member, an ex-girlfriend, some co-workers that you don't like, anybody who says they believe that you are a threat to yourself or others, the same way people go get a PPO, they can then get this, you know, some states even call them a, a weapons protection order. They can then go down without you having a hearing, without you being brought in front of a judge, and, and without any of those facts actually being tested, they, they send up what's called a red flag, which is, oh my God, he's crazy. Such as the, the young man who did the shooting over the weekend, apparently it had a, a hit list of people he wanted to kill and women that he wanted to rape. And apparently even the other shooter, his mother had notified the police weeks ago that he was mentally unstable and that he had firearms. So everybody believes that these red flag laws would stop, in that instance, some of these crazed shooters from having guns. But then again, you've got all of these people who are these Second Amendment. We've got a right to have our gun. We've got a right to have a banana clip with 100 rounds in it. We've got a right to do whatever we've got to do because Russians might come and invade our personal house. They've got it. They feel that, oh, no, we're not about to let the government do this gun grab without some form of due process. So good morning, Rick. Welcome to the studio. And Man, was, that, was that a and, setup? Or what? <laughs> let's bring I mean, Terry Johnson in. That was Good morning, an Terry. Awesome How setup. are you? Mr. Johnson, are you on the phone, counselor? Good morning. Two of my favorite people, three of my favorite people, including Martin, are in that. I should say, you are. <laughs> you say, if you show up over here again right. and you ain't saying you ain't paid props to Martin, brother. <laughs> are you local make... or are you actually in Dallas right now? <laughs> uh, no, I, I will be a little later on. All right, so tell us, we can start out with Terry, because uh, I, I know you aren't, you're not going to be able to hang with us the whole time. So give us. I, I can be with you as long as you need me. Tell me why you are so passionate, fearful. What is it about red flag laws that have you worried and upset? Well, there's a couple things. Uh, number one, as you mentioned, due process. I mean, let's, let's take a look right now at our PPO court. Okay, I can't say right now that Terry Jackson is a threat to me. Uh, they'll issue a PPO. They won't take anything from you, but they'll take they'll they'll issue a PPO. And when you go down, it's not up to actually. Let's correct that. If you go get a PPO on me, even before it's served, it goes into a database. The state police will correct. mail me a letter, and the letter says yeah. you have a PPO. By the way, you have a gun. You need to come turn it in. Correct, but here, here's the thing. There's a hearing on that. That hearing takes place, but the burden of proof is on here on me to prove that you're crazy, not on you to prove that you're not crazy. Right. But here's a here's a bigger issue that nobody's talking about. Okay, 
And this is where I have a huge problem with red flag. The biggest issue is this. Instead of taking guns away from people, why don't we take the people away from the guns? And let me tell you what I'm talking about. If you know I'm crazy, you know I have mental problems, you take my guns away, we say, yay, we took the guns away, the person still is not getting help. Why don't, if this person is mentally ill or crazy, why don't we take them and take them to some type of place where they can get help and we can rejuvenate them, you know, rehabilitate them, get them back in the system because red flag is only temporary. And it doesn't stop things like happening in California this morning, or I'm sorry, last night, where four people were stabbed on a stabbing rampage. So look, I, I knew that somebody I, I, I didn't know it was going to be that on my, That's on my Facebook page right I, I, now Go look I did not know it was going to be Terry I knew that somebody was going to claim the Oh my god, the, there's the stabbing defense Here's my thing I don't. That that is a false narrative. You no, can't it's compare not. the two. Four people were violently killed And By they got a, absolutely a no coverage And no body. press and, and, Well actually it did get a little bit of press It got a little bit of press But here's the thing you, you can't say we can't do anything about gun violence because somebody might get stabbed. In this instance, four people got stabbed. It would have been nice well, if they Actually, had six or seven people got stabbed. Just four of them just happened to die. Four Go of ahead. them died. What? In the event, understand this. There is violence all over our country. But there is absolutely no legitimate reason that anybody should be able to shoot and kill nine or ten people within 30 seconds so, 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 before so, the yeah. police get to him. You're worried about the way they're being killed. It sounds like he's also killed. trying to intimate that he has an issue with the speed that one's finger can move. <laughs> I, 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 I've got a problem with an AR-15 and an AK-47 well, what, well, what's the, what's and an the, SKS brand. What, 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 we'll get to that in a minute. Let's go the, back to red it, flag. All, all it is is a firearm, and, it, and it's not a so-called weapon of warfare. The, the AK-47s or 74s that you or I can legally buy at a gun shop to de well later give on. Give me a legitimate later, later, reason for an SKS. I'll give you. German I'll give. I'll give, give you the street. original reason. The original reason is because it is my right and I want it. The original reason is your right to have a firearm, not a firearm no, that you it's, can it's, kill actually, fifty people with at one time. It's a right to keep and bear arms, and, and you know, and, and, if, and, if we, and if we want to, and if we want to be technical, arms is not just firearms. It's damn near anything, including knives. You believe that you should have dynamite at your house? Why can't I? Oh, Rick, come on, wait. Why now, can't I? Terry? Do, wait, do, do I have? The question is, do I have a legitimate purpose with for it? And two, am I responsible? And am I safe with it? If your answer, Nick, if the answer to all three of those questions, safe. if those questions to all three of those is yes, then why shouldn't I? Okay, so here's we're gonna get back to red okay, flag. Yeah. We're just gonna, we're gonna switch. Then that. we go. No, we ain't gonna switch. We're gonna too switch logical, time. But that's okay. We're going to spend plenty of time this morning on this <laughs> because while I believe that I've got a right to have a gun. While I believe that I have a right and a, and a necessity to protect myself and my family, oh, I oh, don't now, believe... Now, now that you said that, let me just say this. Let me, let me say this. Are you aware of the fact that there have been at least two major Supreme Court decisions that have stated that the police are not... Do, they do not have a duty to protect you. You are aware of that, right? I, I, and Terry can even tell you about a case that they had here in the state, in, in, here in Detroit where a federal court judge downtown said that you can't sue the police for failing to exactly. do their job because right. they don't have a constitution. You don't have a constitutional they could be, right to they, have them They could it. be in their police car watching you get stabbed Rick, to death and Rick, not stop it, and you cannot sue them. Rick, do me a favor. Get me back to red flag laws and tell me why you believe that these things are dangerous. Why, what's well, dangerous? Red, red, red flag law. Red, red, Go ahead. Red, 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 flag, red flag is this. Number one, the, one of the most fundamental rights that we have is to due process. The reason we have the Constitution of the United States is so the government doesn't come and take things away. If you go back, and I believe the movie, and I, and I could be wrong about this, Tom Cruise was in the movie, I think it was Minority Report, 
but they would go out and they would, you know, catch people and do things to people, arrest them before they committed crimes. Here's the thing. We can't arrest people and do things just to say, you know what, I think you're a bad little kid. I'm going to put you in juvenile now. Now, you haven't done anything wrong. You've made a statement, but I'm going to take your rights away. Where is the due process in that? And once you start that slippery slope, what's next? That's the problem. Because you think... What's right next now, is your next door neighbor is going to say he's black and he's got a gun and I think he's a danger. And so they're going to go get a uh, restraining order and the police are going to show up and say, we think you're a danger to yourself and your neighbors, so give us your gun. Absolutely. Right. With, 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 yeah. with no due process. And then here's the kicker. They make you prove that you're not a danger. You've turned due process, to use Terry's legal term, on its head because now you've reversed it. I, I've been tried in secret. I've been convicted in secret. And I'm being punished. Hold on. That's the thing. If this, is not a, this is not a convicted in secret. But here's the thing. And, and then after We the have a, a, at least a hundred different examples of things that happen. In, I mean, you and I and everybody else, Man, we know who the crazy Man, person Man. is in the neighborhood. We know who everybody, look, Crazy Mike that I've represented, when you knew it. <laughs> everybody in the neighborhood knows who the crazy neighbor is. Okay. Everybody in the neighborhood or the, the folks that you work with, you know who that Cra person crazy is. Crazy or dangerous? Is there a difference? Is there a line of demarcation between the two? Or are they Actually, synonymous? let me tell you this. Once, was, was he dangerous or was he crazy? He was crazy. All crazy time. people aren't dangerous. All crazy people are not dangerous. But the moment that that crazy guy decided to say, uh... I'm off my medicine, and I've got a gun inside, and I feel like killing the people on the street. He oh, became okay. dangerous. Okay. But so here's the hold on. Let me let me let me ask my issue here. My issue is if in fact everybody knows who, and, and I'm tired of hearing all of the 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 cops that got killed last year, both of the two in Detroit. The the issue was everybody said, oh, we've already known that guy was crazy. Everybody knew he was crazy. Not only knew he was crazy, we knew he had a gun. How many times do we have to have this issue where the per everybody knows that he's crazy and he got a gun and nobody does anything about it? But, but Terry, that's the wrong standard. Think about it. The standard is not I'm crazy and not I have a gun. The difference is am I a threat to myself or others? And that's just what you said right there is the reason things like this are going to go. But he's crazy, he's got a gun. Not... I'm crazy and I've threatened to do something to myself. I've threatened to do something to other people. And more importantly, as it relates to this, you've got to keep in mind, if the person's crazy, why don't we do something to help the person and not worry about the tool they're using? Because guess what? As you posted on your Facebook the other day, look at Bath, Michigan, the biggest mass killing, no guns. Look at Timothy McVeigh in Oklahoma, no guns. If you know they're crazy, let's get the crazy people help and stop focusing on the tool that they're using. We already have a process in place to have somebody civilly committed if, in fact, that you can prove that they are a threat to themselves or others. You're going to wind up having them at least for 72 hours. You can get me held while a doctor examines me to determine whether or not I'm a threat to myself or others, and, and then I get a chance to leave. So that my, happens so, without no, due process. So my, so, so, my, my question, so, so my question to you is, why do we need to like abandon or ignore the current process to get a personal protection order? Because you've and got go, and too go many to this and go to this extreme gun. risk personal protection order deal where you're actually trampling over someone's constitutional rights. If you're truly worried, like Terry mentioned a few moments ago, so very eloquently, I might add, why not get that person the help they want? You know why? Because I don't know. They're worried about who's going to pay for it, how much it's going to cost. Is, is that an issue? You make it a medical cost issue and no one wants to front that and it's just cheaper to take everybody's guns? Well, this has been interesting, but it is, we've got to take a break. It is 620. 313-778-7600. Get on the line. When we come back on the other side of the break, we're going to talk more of with our two gun experts about red flag laws, and which are personal protection orders to take away your guns. We'll be right back. Indeed, it's 
to buy over three million businesses for hiring, where business owners and HR professionals can post job openings with they questions. They all live there. They can communicate with candidates from online dashboard and indeed.com slash hire. Hi, I'm John London with a place for mine. Over the years, we've helped thousands of families out here. And today's senior living communities have never been better. With amazing amenities like movie theaters,10 a.m. The Superstation, the voice of Detroit. 22 minutes after the hour of 6 a.m. I'm Martin Patton here with your traffic and weather. <clears throat> right now in traffic, we have some construction to tell you about coming up in Oakland. Upcoming construction at I-696 eastbound between I-75 and I-94. And that's going to begin on Friday at 10 p.m. And all ends are scheduled to close until 5 a.m. on Monday. And Wayne, you have construction in two areas. First area, I-94 westbound between 75 and I-96. And that's going to start Friday at 9 p.m. And all lanes are going to be closed until Saturday at 9 p.m. Uh, second area in Wayne, I-94 westbound between the I-96 and Michigan Avenue. That's going to start Friday at 10 p.m. And all lanes are going to be closed until 5 p.m. on Monday. So be aware of that. And other traffic, right now in Windsor, stop and go traffic at the Ambassador Bridge between Canada and the U.S. In Macomb, your slowdown today is at M59 eastbound between Mound and Cass Avenue. Pontiac, we're looking at M59 between M59 westbound between Woodward Loop North and Saginaw Street. In Ypsilanti, Michigan Avenue eastbound between U.S. 23 and Carpenter Road. Also in Canton, you're looking at Michigan Avenue eastbound between South Beck and Belleville Road. Canton Wayne, Michigan Avenue westbound between South Lots and South Haggerty Road. And Ypsilanti, again, Michigan Avenue westbound between Carpenter Road and US 23. That backup has started to get a little bit more intense. It's going up to 11 minutes right now. And in Pontiac, Woodward Avenue southbound between Martin Luther King Jr. South Boulevard South and Square Lake Road is running slow as well. Now, on to the weather. Right now in Detroit, it's 71 degrees and mostly cloudy. Today, we're looking at sunshine and clouds mixed with a stray shower or thunderstorm possible with a high of 84 degrees. Tonight, clear skies, low around 60 degrees. Friday, plenty of sunshine with a high of 82 degrees. And again, Friday night, we got a low of 60 degrees mostly clear skies and on Saturday sunshine and clouds mixed with a high of 81 degrees 
The weather's been brought to you by Weather Vision, and the traffic's been brought to you by the Total Traffic Network. Now, stay tuned for the second half of our own Urban Conservative show with Kerry Leon Jackson, right here on 9, 10 a.m., the Superstation, the voice of Detroit. morning again metro detroit this is carrie leon jackson your urban conservative how are you this morning time now is 6 26 a.m if you've got to be there by seven o'clock you're down to 34 minutes to get there you're listening to 9 10 a.m superstation the voice of detroit the number here in the studio is 313-778-7600 313-778-7600 this morning we're talking about red flag laws the many, at least 17 states have passed red flag laws, which give law enforcement authorities an opportunity to show up at the home or workplace or wherever they think they'll be able to find you and knock on your door and say, you need to turn your gun in because somebody, anybody, it doesn't have to be police. It can be police. It can be, you know, a local prosecutor. It can be one of your co-workers. It can be one of your ex-girlfriends. It can be your children. It can be any of your neighbors, anybody at all. Who Man, is, I is think willing, you know what anybody means. It's nah, anybody. Who, anybody who's willing to say that you can, are a threat to yourself or others would have the ability to go down and not just get what's what you're used to and have been used to for 25 years as a PPO against you, but they're actually able to get an order that says you are a threat and that you have guns, and then they will send law enforcement and you think that law enforcement doesn't have enough time to, you know, answer runs and save people when you're getting robbed, but they would actually have a new burden where they now have to go knock on people's doors and say, give me your gun. And there are plenty of gun advocates, some people call them gun nuts, but gun advocates and NRA professionals who are up in arms and saying, no, wait, hold on, we want due process, we want a hearing and all of these other things before you take away our gun. I've got one question for Rick Ector, who was in the studio, and we'll get back to Terry Johnson in a minute, and we're going to start taking some calls. But, Rick, before we take a call, i got one question. What's your question? Uh, is there any common sense gun reform that you think would help stop some of the violence in our country right now? Is there anything that you sense. would, anything that you would support that you believe being an NRA expert, being a, a expert at teaching people how to use guns, who routinely, regularly, and before we leave, you need to make sure that I'll you give, give you everybody all of your thing information. I'll give you a thing that we can do right now. We can take a look at all the 20,000 gun laws we currently have on the books and that we're not enforcing and actually enforce them and see if that actually makes a difference. Such as? Any, take one, anyone. Uh, people who go to a gun shop and they fill out a, the form that says that they don't have any firearm prohibitions and they lie on the form so they can buy a gun. That's a felony. So wait a minute. Prosecute. When they fill the form out, they lie on the form? Yeah. So prosecute those people. <laughs> you said anything, anybody. That's Yo. what I want to know. Is so it, let's, it, let's, let's, when we have violations, let's prosecute them. So your position is we've got enforce, enough laws on the books we just the need to enforce the, the laws books. that we have. Let's go to the phones. Let's talk to Dorian. Good morning, Dorian. How are you? I'm doing all right, fellas. Good morning. Good morning. What's on your mind? Well, I mean, red flag thing is, uh, I think that's a little archaic, and it's a little uh a little too reaching because you can literally just point at your neighbor across the street and say they're crazy just because you got to an argument or, or they parked their car wrong. That that does not make sense. That's not sensible gun laws. Honestly, like Rick said, if you enforcing paperwork, you enforce it because it's so easy. We got we got what that six hundred million guns. We got two guns per, probably per person on the streets. And it's so easy. You go to gun shows. You can buy guns off the internet. You know, you can do a whole lot of stuff. Well, when we say buy guns off the internet, you still have to go through a dealer in the middle when you pick it up, though. 
well, you still have a black web. So. You know, oh well, yeah. Well, you can do anything on the black web. You can order hits on people on the <laughs> black web. I mean, I mean, I mean you're taking it to a whole different level on the black web. Right, but you'd be shocked how easy it is to access that. That's not very hard to do. But you, right? it's it's not. But it still requires some education, and people got to learn what the Tor browser is and how to actually do it and not get caught. You know, but you know, it can be done. Yeah. It can be done. I think the best legislation should be, and I know that I know that NRA will hate this. Uh oh. This is the only way. This is the only way this is going to work. Uh oh. Honestly, lay it on me. What you got? Come on. It's not the mechanism of the gun. What is the killing? What is the real killer? The bullet. The bullet. Why not? Ah oh, man, you know how many times I've heard this, but go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Well, make I, make I, them a thousand dollars. That right? was make a thousand dollars last around, year. Right? I believe what you should do. You got to make bullets so nearly inaccessible to those who, okay, say. What, what do you mean by in a, What do you mean by not accessible? He, he simply it. means, as you just said, if you you raise the price, yeah, what. What was proposed by Wayne County Commissioner? No, what was Davis a, what was what was proposed year. by Chris Rock, the comedian, during this comedy special? And, and well, so plenty of other it's, it's politicians It's an old, tired it. Chris Rock joke, is what it is. But the, it, but you telling me you don't think that if well, bullets are a thousand dollars a piece that that here, we won't here, have people shooting the fifty of them at one time? Here's the underlying thing that goes along with firearm ownership and its responsibility. And as a responsible gun owner, I'm expected to at least practice and be reasonably certain that I can hit what I'm aiming at. We need to practice. You're taking away our ability to actually use the firearm safely if you're making uh, ammunition a thousand rounds, a thousand dollars per round. It, it, it's, it well, defies sanity. That's anything, look, that's a fee and an absurd price of that. Something like that. What I'm suggesting. Plus, you got people who okay. got the skills okay. and, and and the smelters, and they can actually cast and right. make their own firearms at home. So the same people who do reload, the way that they go out and they do reloads, right? Grow your own plant. What I'm suggesting, what I'm suggesting, just like gecko bullets, right? And you know what I'm talking about. You got dummy rounds that are quite expensive. You're gonna count them rounds. That person, who you wanna kill, you're gonna have to think like, yo, those bullets are expensive. I can't, I'm not, and we're talking about $1,000. You make a box of 40 cal bullets should be in the range of 100 bucks. If the gun is six, seven, dollars That's expensive, bro. Why is the bullet 20 bucks? That's expensive. <laughs> That's expensive. I, I, I agree I, with him. Why is the box 20 that, bucks? Because... You, look, it's, you price things at the market, and if you leave it at twenty bucks, you know good and well you're going for a lower market. If, you're letting a lot more people go get them than should be buying them. If I'm getting robbed exactly. and my life is in peril within twenty feet, which is generally speaking self defense def uh, distance, twenty feet and in, you don't want me missing people at twenty feet away and ten feet away because I haven't been practicing because the rounds cost too much. That that'll actually actually make us less safe. That'll actually, that'll actually help your business actually impact because it's someone. Oh, don't affiliate me with those guys. <laughs> if you know anything about me and them, we got a thing and had one for a few years now. So, no, I'm not affiliated with those guys. Rick's Firearm Academy of Detroit. Any kind of gun uh, shooting range, they would, it would be, and it would be imperative that someone would want to be trained so you wouldn't waste bullets. And like you say, you can't. I'm not saying you shouldn't. Yeah, the Second Amendment is important. It's very, very important. Got very. And not because of our government and the way our government is acting, we keep things going the way they're going. We will need those guns. I, I agree, Dorian. Man, you Dorian, are feeling me 100%. Dorian, I got to knock out some of these other callers. <laughs> Thanks for calling, <laughs> brother. Have a good morning. Let's go to Lawrence. Good morning, Lawrence. How are you? Yes, thanks for taking my call. Listen, I, I definitely have an a issue or a problem with this, uh, these red flag laws. <clears throat> I do believe that uh, it is it's absolutely important uh, uh, towards my uh, rights as a citizen of this country, uh, my constitutional rights uh, to bear arms. Uh, for someone just to to come up with these ideals like they have most recently, there's someone sick selling water on the side of the street. Uh, different calls because they don't fight me or they have issues with me because of the uh, nonstop pairing arms. But Lawrence, hold on. Do me a favor. Take a break. It, uh, we beat that over for the last half an hour. But here's my question. You, ha If, in fact, such as the, the, the mother of the shooter down in El Paso, 
when the mother knows that her son has a mental health issue and she knows that he has weapons, you don't think that at some point in time somebody should take some sort of steps to say, hold on, we don't want this person that, that is not totally here, that he is not as as all together as we would like to have somebody that's going to walk around with a gun. You don't think that at some point that a red flag should go up and that somehow your government should do something to protect you? Well, well you, can, you can extrapolate that. Just think about every bad thing that happened. Somebody knew about it and somebody didn't tell, whether it's gun-related or not. Are you saying now that we have to start prosecuting? Pros prosecuting oh, people who know stuff and don't say something? Heck yeah! <laughs> Heck yeah! It's time for you to stop sitting on the sidelines. So you got to get so involved. You wow. got to do something. Wow. Yes. I, I, I wow. Think it, is, it is absolutely dangerous legislation to allow those individuals to do preemptive psychological evaluations on someone. I, I, I do believe there's an issue with that. There, there's going to be a problem. Lawrence, I will agree with you on that. I will agree with Rick on, you know, that there are some flaws in the, the, the current proposal. But again, at some point, we can't just sit here and twiddle our thumbs and say we're, we're not, not going to do anything. You know what? The people who are twiddling their thumbs are the people that actually know that there's a problem. And every single one of these cases, when they do a so-called post-mortem on <laughs> what actually happened, what went down, People knew about it, and people didn't do anything. And now, yeah, bring Terry back in now. Go ahead, Terry. I lost Thanks. So, lost. so here's the thing. Two things real quick. One thing that's a huge problem with this, and this is what I said before, you only take the guns away. It's not forever. It's probably for a year. So now you're going to take somebody that you say is crazy. You take the guns away for a year. You get them absolutely no help, none, zero. And then a year later, you say, okay, well, here, it's been a year. That makes zero sense. That's why I say it's not the gun we need to get away from the person. We need to get the person away from the gun, get the person help. Well, think about this, Terry. You did not get this person the help that they needed, and they are, let's say this person, just for the sake of argument, is truly dangerous. And you took the guns away from this truly dangerous person, who wants to hurt someone but hasn't done anything yet. Taking the guns he currently has is not going to keep that dangerous, angry person from hurting me. So you've actually done nothing. It's going to stop that danger. It's going to lessen his opportunity to go do it right then. No, if I want you, so, I'm going to get wait, you. Let, let's go with the next thing. Uh, uh, aside from the crazy white boys who are driving around town killing people, you've got a husband who's mad at the wife. The wife decides she knows he's dangerous. He's already, she called the police. He's posted bond. He's back out. But not only is he out, he's got other weapons. He, of course, has this, you know, he, he's out. He's on bond. They told him don't have any contact with him. What are we going to do? We're going to wait until after he goes to get the gun and go shoot her before we say Thank we need to take that gun away from him? So should we take all the knives out of the house, too? We they should take the, the, the knives, the rope, an iron, a brick, anything that you know he can use to go and harm her while I he's mad. You. I can harm you with anything. Why don't we keep him locked I can look around this office. So, again, here's my thing. Y'all are still on this. I'm going to say no to everything. Give me an idea of some steps we can take to start to protect our society. Terry just told you earlier, get the person some help. We already have a procedure for getting the people mental health then, then evaluation. When, then when these folks know they have family members that need help and they don't get them they that don't help. Call, they don't know who to call to get them the help. Well, let's get that information out there. Okay. That's the point. Why do we need red flag if, in fact, what you just said, the process is already out there? Why do we... That, that should be the question to it, you. Obviously, it hasn't been... It? Obviously, it hasn't been working. Let, hold on. Now... Is there a way that we can leave Terry on and we can take Isaac's call too? Yeah. All right. Let's take Isaac's call. Good morning, Isaac. Good morning, sir. How are you? Pretty good. And you? Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm weighing on that guy now. He needs to be red flagged anyway right away. <laughs> so, so, I want to ask him a question. Where in the Second Amendment does it give you the right to carry a gun in public. Uh, where it says, shall not be infringed. 
Baloney, you twisting the letters now. No, I'm not. Right. The, the Second Amendment means what it does. I have a mean. I have a right to carry a gun. It doesn't say you have a right to carry a gun concealed. They say you have right to own a gun. The keep not and bear arms. arms. Yes, bear means to carry. You sound like a trumpet, man. <laughs> well, he sounds that not, way, Isaac. I'm not sure exactly Isaac, what you mean you by that. You got to get to know Rick. Here's the thing. You are right. It is the right to keep and, and bear arms. I mean, the Constitution didn't go down into the, the, the brass tacks of how you actually supposed to do that. It doesn't say that you have to carry it concealed. You do not have a right to carry a gun in public. They just let you do it by selling you a life. You only have the right. Right. Actually, open carry is legal in the state of Michigan. You sound like a trumpet again. I can I can walk down the street with an AR over my shoulder on a sling and parade up and down the street if I wanted to. And no one could do white. anything about it. You do it if you're white. You do it if you're black. You and I both know the police are gonna come find you. Well, that's that's why we need to that's why we need to fight these red flag laws. Where for the simple fact of me exercising my constitutional right means that people are going to try to falsely accuse me of being crazy. Then we need to stop this law in its tracks. All right. Well, here's, the here's, a, here's a question for you: Why are the people on Windsor not walking around with guns? Because they live in Canada, and in Canada they don't have a constitutional right to guns. So, in other words, they don't need it. That's what you're saying. No, what I'm saying is that their people need to rise up and tell their government that they should have guns if that's what they want. Take care. Yes. That guy has a, a Make America Great hat. <laughs> well, actually, I um, got on a lane hat right he, now. He, he, he might have, but that's a whole other discussion. But Rick is passionate. And this is the thing, you, you need somebody, especially an African-American, with his passion about guns. But, you know, he, he his heart's going to be broken a little bit later this year uh, because what? we're going to have some legislation that, nah. that, you know, the NRA is not going to agree with. Nah. But, you know, he'll still be in business. So nah, thanks, nah. Isaac. Let me knock out some more of these cards. Nah. Have a good morning. Let's go to Jerry Holland. Good morning, Jerry. How are you? I'm doing great this morning. I was listening to your conversation this morning, the first time call a long time listener, but I had a point I want to make right quick. When the Black Panthers was carrying guns, did you notice all the gun reforms and laws that they came up with? All came and after that, right? You, and you're, you're, you're absolutely right. right. You're absolutely right. I'm gonna hang up. I, I want to hang up, and I just want to hear you respond if you don't mind it. No, you don't have to hang up, brother, but here's the thing. When the Panthers came through, yeah, it, a lot of people got upset by it, and, you know, and by the same token, uh, too. A lot of people, white people, got upset that black people had were starting to exercise their constitutional rights and carry guns and, and stand and be bold and confront police officers, and Ronald Reagan and many others decided that they needed to do something about the fact that black people were carrying guns. Exactly. Because it was the other people carrying guns. That's my point exactly. Now, it's when they're carrying guns, we can't find a rule, a law, or anything on the books to stop this from being what it is. I, but I just want to throw it out but here, here, before you take off and, and listen in, let me let me just tell you this so you don't so so we're on the same page. As a person of color, non-white person, you have a right to keep and bear a, bear a firearm and to carry a firearm today. And if that's what you want to do, I fully support you 100%. And even if you don't want to do it, I support your right not to do it. There you go. I'm a hunter. I do have weapons. I do carry weapons. I'm licensed. I'm a mm -hmm. hunter. I do, but it's not like it's an everyday thing for me. Like it's nothing. I, I, you know, I work a lot, so it's not like it's something I need. I don't really need that. Man, I said that. I said <laughs> that the day I got robbed in my own driveway in North Rosedale Park, man. And that's and that's how I became a gun owner. No, I had a I had a twelve gauge shotgun, but I didn't have a handgun. That's how I went out and got a like a pistol, and I went out and got a license. Like I robbed in my own driveway. Mm. Thanks for your call, Jerry. Have a good morning. Thank you guys so much. All right, let's go to Percy. Good morning, Percy. Good morning, my brother. What's happening? Welcome back. Uh, somebody yesterday told me that they missed you. They didn't, they hadn't heard from you since you've been back. I told them I know he's back in town. 
because he was styling and profiling out with all of the Democrats two, a week and a half ago, making sure that he was downtown supporting all of his people. So I knew Percy was back and healthy and everything, but, you know, you hadn't dialed in yet. Good morning. Good morning to you. So you know I'm always for pushing some type of policy that's going to help uh, be in a better state of life, right? Right. So I can't believe as adults that here it is, we're looking at a serious problem where people, our kids, when they go to school, they're being gunned down. We got people going out in the street, going to malls, shopping. They're being gunned down. And we're not willing to step up to the plate and put in, in when something's not working, the laws we got going on right now, they're not working. Am I right or wrong? You are right. absolutely right, and every law that they propose won't work either. What we have is a human wait problem. Minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, sir. Wait a minute, sir. So there's a state of emergency right now with live ammo killing individuals. And until we can come up with something that's going to take look, I should not be have to worry about my family being gunned down by somebody having a bad day. So... But right now, put a freeze on everything until we figure out what we're going to do. Stop it. Just help, help me understand what you mean by put a freeze on everything. What do you mean by that? Stop selling everything right now. Stop. Stop. Like, don't sell any Percy, ammunition. Don't Percy, sell hold on. Guns. Let me just tell you this. Percy, let me tell you something. Uh, stop by any of the gun shops and ask them how many AR-15s okay. they've sold in the last month. It is going to scare yeah. the heck out of you. Exactly. Okay, but so look, so look, so look. I'll give you, okay, so if you want to purchase the gun, I'll give you that. But put something on the live ammo. Put something that you're going to raise the price of the live ammo, or and if you want to buy it cheap, then put it in a designated area where a person could go. Look, I used to ski shoot, and I still do a little bit. Mm -hmm. And I go to a certain place. I go, I go to a certain area when I ski shoot because it's a designated area. Now, if you go to a range where you're able to do that, let a person be able to purchase that that lot that ammo for their gun and get it at, at, a, at a lower price. But, but but when you leave that area, the bill makes you. If anybody who anybody who has live ammo, no, no, yeah, it's it's still it's, it's no. still a form no. of discrimination. You're still no. trampling over people's no. rights, and you're not going to stop bad guys from getting ammo. I have, wait a minute, I have a right to not. Have to worry about my kids and my life being threatened by somebody with live ammo in the street. I have children and I have grandchildren, and I echo your sentiments about wanting our family members to be safe. All I'm saying is, if you want to have that, then put it in a restricted designated area. Well, here, here's the thing, man. I got robbed in my own on my own driveway, and I came home from work. It was dark because it was like 5 o'clock at the end of the year. I got robbed in my own driveway. Sir, you not you don't need an automatic machine gun in your car to protect yourself while you're in the driveway. Well, it, it's not legal for me to have a machine gun. Okay. And we don't sell machine guns. He didn't mean a machine, machine gun. gun. He meant an, an AK-47. Well, what's the difference? That's just a rifle. It's a assault rifle. Sir, you, you, uh, so you don't need over... Are you serious? You don't know how many people are out here. There are crews of four or five people robbing people in crews. And if it's four or five of them, if you got ten rounds in the clip, you can't drop them? Sir, sir, you look at all the, you look at all the police reports. And anybody that got robbed in their driveway didn't have over 20 people trying to rob them. So give me that. Give me that. How many rounds of ammunition do you expect, say, a law enforcement officer to have, Kerry? Uh, 18, 20. But, I mean, you just told me you only need just one round per person. I didn't say you need one round per person, I, but I, you don't need 50 rounds per person. Who There's cares? absolutely no reason to have a but banana you know if, 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 100 if, rounds. If I want to carry 100 rounds and it's legal for me to carry 100 you rounds, need to learn and, I, how to reload. And, and I'm you responsible to with the 100 rounds, what's the problem? You need to learn how to reload. There what is, is the problem? No. The problem is that folks are winding up I'm a law-abiding citizen on the engaging street. in a lawful activity. What is the problem? I am a law-abiding citizen, and my life is not supposed to be threatened by people's foolishness. I agree. I agree. I agree. 
but there are bad people out here, and they don't care what you and I think. And a lot of them live and hang out in Detroit. And you know what? You're absolutely right. Okay, then, look, you should have no more than as your personal use to protect yourself something so let me so let me ask you: How many rounds of ammunition should I have to protect myself? How many rounds of ammunition should I have? I mean, man, look. If you need over ten, you a bad shot. That means I mean, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Ten, ten rounds to have. I, ten rounds to have at one time. So I shouldn't have any rounds to go practice with. You did, but Percy is six fifty. I gotta knock out a couple more callers, brother. Right, right, Thanks, right. brother. That's Ten good rounds of ammunition. Let's go serious? to Otis. We gotta go. Let's Ten go rounds. To Otis. Good morning, Otis. Good morning, and my thing is, I say the few air, little air time that we get since we don't own no media, media is that to have a discussion like this. One thing is, we know the black people I don't care if they're liberal or conservative. The whole conversation is the same thing about the Second Amendment. I gotta protect myself. I'm fine. Y'all can have that. Then the conversation is how many rounds do I need? I don't care if you got a thousand rounds, that's up to you. Maybe you should be insured like a car if you got a gun. Another thing is that when you speak about these uh, uh, items that laws on the book, you should tell people where they can go look at it that's not being enforced. So maybe that's what we should do first. But we know black things talk like white, racist, uh, neo-Nazis when it comes to guns. Because the language is the same, you know. So where are these laws that you said not being enforced? That's the information you should put out. If you want people to be safe and understand that we can come up with some creative laws to the gentleman sitting next to you. Because we don't do it. And we have this argument for media sensation. You know, a uh, thousand rounds, two rounds. Well, this is short a gun on it, just like a car. And so when something happened, they can't say, well, it was an accident. I don't have no money, you know. In a car, if it's an accident, you don't have no insurance, you possibly go to jail. But with the gun on it, if it's an accident, you don't have no money, then nothing they can do. You're a broke person. And so the family that's hurt, maimed, or killed cannot benefit from the gun owner for those simple reasons. And the gun owner is going to say, just like white, black, conservative, liberal, going to argue, why do we need insurance? Well, well it, wait, it wait, be, wait. Because, because, because the street and hit a neighbor. Because it, here's the thing. You're using, you, you want to use insurance as a form of gun control. You want to introduce a cost into the equation. So no, much what insurance the, does so is much, so much, insurance so much the risk. Control, no, not at all. Here, here, here's the white. thing. Not three talk points. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Wait, 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 wait. No. Rick, insurance right. shifts the burden of risk. It moves it. If, in fact, now, is there something wrong with that? Wait a minute. Do we have it, a constitutional right to a car, though? But if you've got the car. Uh, no, so okay, so you've got the, the car, government you've got to can outlaw automobiles tonight and put you in jail if you don't abide by that ridiculous requirement. Listen to what you said. Constitutional right for the Second Amendment, right? We do have a federal constitutional right for the Second Amendment, but each state can decide as long as not less than the constitutional right, not taking away... No, they can't gun. violate the Constitution. Well, violate whatever, but the state can say you can have insurance. That's up to each state to decide. So that. wait a minute. Now, hold on, Otis. Hold on. Terry. Terry, what... So I... I is the service that you offer, is it insurance for gun owners? Um, well, it's not insurance. What it is, is in case, in, in, in firearms legal protection, what we do is we provide uh, legal protection for people that use a firearm or any other weapon in self-defense because of people like some of your callers who say you shouldn't do this. If I protect myself and, you know, someone's coming after me, I legitimately protect myself. I may have to pay $100,000 in legal fees for people like Rick who are just in his driveway doing nothing wrong and somebody comes after him and sues him. That's what we do. Yeah, like, it used to be crazy where if you actually shot someone in self-defense, the bad guy, while he's healing in the hospital, he's got a he lawyer sue to sue you. And if he died, his heirs could still sue you. I mean, it's just yeah. insane. Well, you need insurance. Let me say. 
let me let me say two quick things that here I know in the interest of time. This person who talked about a stockpile of things, I want you to think about what um, the folks over at Action Impact do. They stopped selling ammunition on like New Year's Day, New Year's Eve, etc. But guess what? People are still with ammunition doing what? Shooting guns. Okay. Right. And the other gen the other gentleman talked about there should be a law for me to be safe. You know, so my family don't get killed. It's on the books. It's called homicide. You can't kill people. There is a law on the books. The thing people is, Terry, so they think if they put another 20,000 laws on the books, that somehow that's going to magically make bad people become good people. It just what doesn't happen. Now, anyway. tell me where to go at to see the laws that you say is not being, uh, uh, the laws not being pushed or whatever the word I'm looking for, not being used. Enforced. That's what you should be telling people. So they can go look, and that would take this uh, this discussion into another way. The anti-gun people don't laws. care. They just I want more and more laws because they because because they don't want us to have guns. Okay, y'all, this has been a great discussion. Y'all, listen up. It is six fifty-six. This hour went by really quick. And Nolan Philly and Kelly Cobb are standing outside you mean the doorway. We got to leave. We got to leave and give them these seats. Oh man, I thought you had a two-hour <laughs> show. I'm gonna. <laughs> Thanks for your time. <laughs> Ain't it in bill? We not gonna get to you. Uh, call me tomorrow. Or call me next week. Otis, thanks for hanging on, brother. But we're out of time. Real quick, Rick, tell them how they can find you, and then we're going to have Rick a character. I'm all over the place. Find me all over social media. R I C K E C T O R. www.detroitccw.com. Terry, shoot. Go ahead. Your turn. Thank you. I love you. Said shoot. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Firearms Legal, firearmslegal.com, and we actually will cover anybody, any of our members who are uh, have a red flag incident. So we're the only company in the country doing that. So protect yourself. Firearms Legal will protect you. Thanks for having me on, Terry. Thanks, Terry. Thanks, hey, Rick. See you Rick. next time, Terry. Thanks, Rick, for getting up early, coming to join me. We're going to have to <laughs> man, do this I wouldn't miss later. this, man. All right. <laughs> The next up is the Nolan Finley Show. Nolan Finley, Andre Ash, Kelly Cobb, and Martin. It's going to rain today. Take your umbrella with you, and I'll talk to each of you at 6 o'clock tomorrow morning. Have a great day. Clear. That was quick, man. When you got something to talk about, that was so quick. Yeah, it do. It do. <laughs> you light up your phone, man. Like, like, Hello? Is anybody there? Is anybody? Somebody just call me and tell me what to talk about. <laughs> <laughs> I tell them that all the time too. I'm like, we'll talk about whatever y'all want to talk about. It's up to you.